Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here. Welcome to episode number four of my Lazio Football Manager 2016 Let's Play. And as you guys know from the previous episode, we did end up selling Stefan de Vrij to Manchester United for 36 million. So that was a huge fee. Uh, he moves on and I'm pretty happy to sell him to a team in a different league and also a team that is not a part of the Champions League for this season anyway. But you would imagine, you'd like to think uh, Manchester United would get back into the top four in Champions League, but I don't want to worry about them too much. I'm going to focus on our replacements and that was in Daniele Rugani. And don't forget, it was on the transfer deadline day as well. When I sold him, then I brought in Rugani. So, it was dealt with fairly quickly, not like normal when maybe it takes a few days because, yeah, you have to get it done on the final day and the game lets you do it quicker, <laughs> which is a good thing. So we got him for a bit cheaper. Again, if we go back, we sold De Vrij for $36 million and then we're able to sign Daniele Rugani for 28.5, which was, we kind of met halfway. I was making offers and Juve, they were countering a bit higher and we eventually just met halfway at an acceptable fee. And yeah, no doubt he's going to be a great player. What, 21 years old, he could potentially be like a 10-year player for us. I probably won't do this save for 10 years, but yeah, you don't know what's going to happen. And I will continue to record three games in episode. So if you are uh, continuing to like that, don't forget to actually like the video. That will tell me that. But he is going to be a great player for us, I would imagine. And I feel he'll suit us more uh, than De Vrij. Like, he's Italian, and I've already mentioned that. I want to add more Italians, more homegrown players uh, to the club. Um, even so far, there was a couple players I couldn't register. So over the first seasons, I'll be uh, I'll be shortening the squad and making it a core of Italian players as well. That's what I hope to do. Of course, I'll have other players that aren't Italian, but you, you have to have that balance to have a really good squad. But hopefully, yeah, that will be all good. And how about our first game? We're playing against Juventus. And Roma dropped points as well. They only picked up a draw. So hopefully we could stay at the top of the table. But the biggest thing here is to avoid defeat for me. This is probably the hardest game of the season and we have it this early. But we did have experience playing against Juventus, even though it was like a pre-season game. We, I know I already mentioned it a couple times. Like we had even other friendly games to play after that. But the good thing is... Uh, we might have a chance to get something from the game. Like, I wouldn't be thinking I could get a win here, but maybe a draw could be a possibility. But even if we lose it, yeah, I'm not going to get too mad about it because, like, yeah, this is the hardest game of the season. But I want to test ourselves at the same time to really see where we are at. And Federico Marchetti is back. It's always hard uh, figuring out when to play him, but I thought I might as well play him. I might as well to get that match fitness into him. I feel as though he is much better than Barisha. Well, not much better. He definitely is a better player. Uh, Barisha's been doing well in training apart from his vision, but vision's not that important for goalkeepers. So, yeah, um, this team is fairly good in terms of the conditions. Uh, Rugani's going to come straight in to play against his old team the first... How about that for a debut? <laughs> that, that is, that's crazy to do that, isn't it? But, yeah, just right. Well, that's what we signed him for. He's our best center back now, not 100%, and he's only going to keep getting better. So that is scary. Oh, yes. One of the guys that got mad is Mauricio. I'll talk about it more maybe in Champions League, but might as well now. I couldn't register him, and then he... Well, I could have, but I didn't want to. I had to choose between him and our other center back we have that we haven't even used that at the same time, the two. Milan Besovac and then also Mauricio. I see Mauricio as a play I'm going to sell, even though he's got a contract to 2019. Was oh, I was really comparing him heavily uh, between the other guy, Bisvac, uh, Bisavac, and he has a competitive streak, which can sometimes lead him to bending the rules, aka getting cards, and especially part that with 16 aggression. So, yeah, 16 aggression, and he is that kind of player. He's probably going to be a guy picking up a lot of cards, so I probably intend to sell him. And then again, if I don't think we need another centre back, we just yeah get rid of him because then we got yeah that Bisavac as the backup. So yeah, we'll be all set. Plus, then I want to develop yeah through players. But we shall get into the game now. Okay, here Juventus have a chance. It's like Stein, and we have to defend this dangerous cross. Could be coming in. Oh, defend it. Oh, Marchetti, what a choice to bring back in, and especially a guy that's not really match fit, making some good saves there. 
So late chance in the half. I'd be really disappointed if we concede, but also you could say Juventus has deserved it. So I'd be interested to see what happens here. Alexandro Rugani, again, dealt with it nicely. Uh, Bilia in the midfield finds Maori. Maori, considering his age, he's been super for us. Get it. Yes. Well done, Radu. Oh, we take the lead just before half time through Miroslav Klosa. Oh, on the 45th or oh, 40th, 40th minute. I'm just getting a bit excited here. Oh, 40th minute goal from Miroslav Klosa. Really impressed with that. But I like the effort from Radu to get the ball ahead of who was that? Yeah, Benucci. He wanted it more. Maybe had the momentum uh, with running forward. But either way, it's another great cross. And he's a guy that's really stepped up also, Radu. I think he had one bad game. But then, yeah, apart from that, he's been very consistent for us this season. And we get rid of it. If we can hold on to this lead, we're in the 40th minute right now. So we just have to be mindful. It's Pereira and it's Marchetti once more. Well, no doubt we're going to have to rely on our goalkeeper to make saves against a team like Juventus. And we took our opportunity. That's what we had to do. And what you have to do in these kind of games when you're not the preferred team and you're playing against like a really superpower <laughs> like Juventus and on their home turf as well. But we look to be heading into half time 1 0 from that 40 minute strike. And we do. Yes, just one minute of time to play. Alexandro, he just gets a talking to. Sure, three of my players get yellow cards, but he just gets a talking to. But I'll take that uh, going into half time. Obviously, you might want to be a bit aggressive against a team like Juventus or when you're just playing a bigger team in general uh, to kind of intimidate them a little bit, if you can at all. But great performance by some of our players. I said I actually praised Maori, but according to the rating anyway, he hasn't been good. But he, he played a part in the lead-up to the goal. So, yeah, <laughs> I'll take that anyway. And we have to guard against complacency. Obviously, I'm happy with the performance. But, yeah, the players know, they know the drill from here. They need to keep focused and also motivated. So, it's a good mix there. Some players motivated and some are focused. That's uh, really good to see. I don't expect to score another goal. That would be amazing. And maybe make sure of it. Uh, like in other games, we've scored a lot of goals, but this is one where we need to defend now. Okay, we just got to be careful. It's Chiellini. I'm glad he's not in the box because he's probably one to win a header. So this is really well. Pogba now. Alexandro. There's just big names everywhere. It's Mandzukic now. See <laughs> all those names in a row. Superstars. Oh, and yeah, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm not going to complain about it or nah. The Juventus, Juventus deserve that goal 100%. So... See, all those names combining. And, yeah, someone didn't track Mandzukic. Someone wasn't the, doing their job. But it's uh, but the only frustrating thing, it's just in from half time. And I said, don't get complacent. And they were complacent a few minutes in. That's the only frustration. Like, I might as well. I should have just praised my players. <laughs> yeah, because we conceded anyway. Now the thing is to make sure that we don't lose this. We deserve at least a point from this game. But giving the way the ball like that is not very good because now it's Dybala. Now it's Dybala and suddenly we, we, we've lost it. We've lost the lead just like that. And well, that's what I hate the most. Like if Juventus scored first and we just ended up losing, yeah, I just would have took it on the chin and like, oh yeah, this is going to be a really hard game. But we're in a position to win this. And the goalkeeper, I hate that when they don't attempt to make a save, they just fall down like that when the ball's already in. That, like, all the saves you made already, uh, Marchetti, that doesn't, it doesn't mean shit. Like, yeah, you didn't even attempt to save. At least try. Try to save one way. Oh, that's frustrating. Anyway, Stefano Mauri is going to be taken off. Interesting. Ravel Morrison, I haven't really used yet. So we'll bring him on and maybe some fresh young legs uh, can do the trick. We've got a few yellow cards. And we have, of course, a lot of options on the substitute bench. Uh, who else? Uh, Lukas Bilia. Any other options? I haven't really used uh, Lulic yet. Um, he can play left-back and central midfield. I don't know what's the best position for him as yet, but he's superb morale, so hopefully yeah, he can do something. Uh, we'll put him box-to-box -box midfielder uh, as well, so we'll play with two of those with Parolo. We'll just make those couple of changes now. So obviously there's enough time in the game to get a goal back. Uh, but we're going to have to be good. We're going to have to be good to score against Juventus. We already did, so hopefully they'll garner some confidence from that. We know we can score against them, but it's not going to be easy. 
they've been fairly dominant today, and that's just from their quality of players, pretty much. Like the Pogbas, uh, Chiellini as well. Their names are everywhere, like I mentioned. Yeah, it's just quality. They're the they're the team I want to get to. Marquisio, they're like a role model team for me. Or what I want to turn Lazio into, that's the motivation. Alexandro now, could they kill it off? I hope they don't. And it looks to be like they're playing fairly attacking. Look, there's just two centre-backs there. Because you have those kind of wide midfielders or... Oh my god, 3-1. I know, I can't get too mad about it because they're too good. <laughs> Juventus is too good. So, yeah, that's very frustrating to see. Leisteiner and again, from across as well. But at the same time, the players are not being marked. So we might as well go attacking now, uh, try and create some opportunities and go into the advanced tactics and see if we'll make a final change. Maybe, again, Stefan Radu. We'll just take him off and we'll bring on Braffi. Just keep him for the next game. You know, he's really important. And, yeah, so we might as well just play a high defensive line even more, more so. Oh, anything else? We've got to look for the overlap. Maybe just be a bit more, yeah, go route one. Yeah, be a bit more, take, take be discipline off. Because we've already kind of lost, we, we've lost the game at this point. So we need to really kind of go for it. And even with the inside forwards, put them on attack roll instead of support. Try and get forward a bit more and, yeah, try and score. Um, as I already mentioned, uh, Juventus is probably one of the hardest teams to beat in world football. Definitely in the top five, if not top three. Okay, throw in here, maybe an opportunity. Parola all by himself. Basta finish, he has to. He has to, and we're right back in the game. Dusan Basta, his first ever goal for Lazio. How about that? Let's see there. But how about Parolo? Just, he was free. You talk about, yeah, play. I guess that happens. It always seems that way when you can see the goal. It looked like Juve wasn't marking our players really well at all, was it? So, yeah, it happens. But, yeah, really well done, uh, Parolo. But guys, it does look like it is going to end like this. It was just really too much at the end of the day to score three goals away from home against Juventus. Uh, they are what you would expect uh, from Juventus, just like week in, week out, uh, solid performances. But we scored two goals against them from four shots on target. So I'd like to think that's uh, pretty clinical <laughs> and eight shots in total. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Again, you can't be happy with losing ever. Like, I'm never going to take... Uh, that kind of mindset, like being happy from a loss, but you take the positives out of it. We had some good individual performances, and that's yeah, that's what we got to. Uh, and you can't fault your effort. Yeah, nobody expected us to win today, but we gave it everything. So, but what I want to take from this now, in yeah, the following two games, I want to get victories in, um, so we can continue that. But if if they result in losses additionally, then you'd be a bit, you would be a bit more concerned with this result here. But again, I'm pleased with what my players show. I felt they gave it their all. They did all they could. So I got, you can't complain and you can't be mad at your players for that. But obviously now Juve will take our position. But guys, now it's time to head into the UEFA Champions League group stages. This is absolutely huge for us because we have an opportunity to get into the knockout stages. Because what Barzell, Monaco and PSV in our group... I think we can get out of this group. I, I really think so. We still have to be good. It's not like we're going to cruise or anything. We're against similar teams. So there's the opportunity. Also, PSV here, they got Nas Singh injured. How long is he out for? Two to three weeks. And then uh, Joseph Zoon, I don't think he is like their best player or anything. Yeah, he's not that good. So won't be a huge be a miss. But uh, Van Ginkel, oh, most definitely, he's going to miss... He returns full fitness in two days, but yeah, he's key player. Then Jetro Willems, who I think is a great player, and he's going to be missing for up to five weeks. Well, was he? he's really tired. He's in need of a rest. I'm not sure. Yeah, they're just he's really being overworked while being injured because he says he's tired. So yeah, I'm not really sure his current situation. But we are going to head into the game. It is huge. And there's like three huge games in this episode. <laughs> you got Juventus, and then now PSV, then Inter. That's really, really huge. And we need to carry on. 
we need to carry on our performance, but at the same time, rotations need to be made. Alessandro Matri is starting, talked about the situation with the strikers. Do we start closer or himself? Land Balde Keita, I'm going to try him as an inside forward now. Drop Philippe Anderson, who hasn't been at his best. Andrea Zivkovic coming in for a start. Same with Onazi. Uh, Patrick at right back as well. So, yeah, and even uh, Lulic at left back. Quite a few rotations um, as they are needed. But Maori, yes, he's sticking around. He's stick- he doesn't get tired. He's like natural fitness, sixteen stamina. Stamina is a bit lower, a bit lower because he's yeah, getting older. <laughs> and yeah, he's he's improving. You look how much I've never seen a thirty-five year old develop that much in his attributes. Of course, and even some physicals are going up. Of course, some will go down. But wow, how about that improvement for a thirty-five year old? That is ridiculous. But either way, let's go into the next game. That's so impressive. I think that's what I'm most impressed um, with him. Uh, just his development as a I wouldn't say development I just mean yeah how I wouldn't say he's improving in his attributes just that's indicating how he's doing in training so I'm just going to say with favorites here so go out there and impress me as simple as that actually here I'm not going to look to do the individual or positional talks uh, to try and get good reactions they know what they have to do so go out and do it lads okay early corner it's Bilia oh good opportunity but well headed away now Zivkovic to Onazi. Onazi finds Bilia out wide now. Lulic crosses in. Zivkovic. What a finish that was. Andrea Zivkovic. Nice. I thought that could have been offside for a second. But uh, we'll check on the replay anyway. But yeah, pretty convincing. That was a really good cross in. Uh, dangerous. Uh, Bilia. But he's in all that space, of course. Uh, Lulic. And no, uh, he wasn't offside. Just, yeah, on the 2D, on the highlights, how Zivkovic kind of stopped after, yeah, he headed. I don't know, but, yeah, great. See, even just introducing these kind of players into the squad, uh, Zivkovic and Rugani as signings, their first team quality, and they're going to be only getting better because of their age. That's what is scary. So you can feel in this game is so different to Juve. Now we're dominating the game. It's Keita, crosses in, Matri, and it's suddenly 2-0, 18 minutes played only, and we could have the game tied up. That's what I mean. Uh, like, we can be so dominant against teams that are either not as good as us or maybe a similar quality. It's hard to compare when they're in a different division, like in a different league, PSV. But I'd like to think we're similar. We've got similar quality. Okay, Lukas Bilia again, now with the free kick. But they defend it well on this occasion. And I shouldn't get too ahead of myself because PSV could score here. And it may, yeah, sense trouble. But now we defended really well. Rugani, he's yeah, suiting well into the team or fitting you know, well into the team. Very nicely. Lulic again with the cross. I don't know what's up with our fullbacks, but they're amazing at crossing, <laughs> especially from the left side. I, I know, I, I, to, in my opinion anyway, I think left footers are better than right footers. They're just a bit more technically gifted. Like, look at that from Lulic. That is ridiculous. Over the goalkeeper. And Matri only had one job to do there. Too easy, it looked like. It's suddenly 3-0, and we're back to our dominating best. Lulic with two assists, and also Matri with two goals have been the standouts in this first half. So there we go, heading into halftime, winning 3-0. It's been a good team performance, but we've had some very good individual performance. And as I said, Rugani, he could easily be a future captain of the club. But again, we could have a few candidates for that because of the young squad and quite a few young players we have. We've still got experience at the same time. A couple of the older guys, uh, they would increase the average age of the squad. But Rugani, Italian, centre-back, you can really see that he could be a future captain of the club. Like For example, we go to the club right now and you can see... Um, who's the captain? Like, Closer is vice-captain, and Lukas Bilia is captain. So, yeah, those are the experienced players in the squad, um, the kind of leaders. And you can see, really, yeah, Rugani being a contender for that um, in the following seasons as the years go by. But we've got to just praise the team with how we went about it in the first half. Just more of the same. Play like that, and I'll be happy. I don't want to see us... Well, honestly, I wouldn't mind so much if we tone it down a little bit and we don't maybe go at 100%. Because, yeah, we've got the game uh, tied up so far. Patrick also at right back has been very impressive. I don't think we've played him yet, have we? 
Uh, he's had one game off the bench, as you can see there. 22, uh, you know he has that one more star to develop into with his potential. And I think like he's a perfect candidate to be a backup for that right-back position. I just hope he doesn't get mad that he yeah won't play too much because he's perfect against the teams we bring him in. For the most part, they'll be against the easier teams and we'll play uh, Basta against the harder teams. He'll come in and perform really well. And here, regardless of how, yeah, maori has been doing, make himself available for a lot of games, uh, we'll take him off here. Again, he could get, again, you know, like injuries. Injuries could be a risk at his age still, even though if he's doing ridiculously well. Ah, oh, it's interesting here. Who are we going to bring on? I reckon uh, Danilo Cataldi, but we just drop back. Drop back, play him in a preferred role for himself into a central midfield role, just uh, change up the specific role he will play. Uh, do deep line playmaker, box to box midfielder. I think we'll add another. I'm just. I uh, will try him advanced playmaker as a central midfielder. Just put him on support. I just want a differing role. I don't want to play like two roles the same uh, in central midfield. Uh, even though you can, there's nothing against that. I just. Yeah, it'd be a di bit different, see how it goes. So we have seemed to have played out this game really, really well, not letting PSV in at all. They might have a late opportunity here, but it won't really mean anything if they score. It would just be a consolation goal. As you can see here, they actually do score. Locadia finds the back of the net, but as I mentioned in the build-up to that, it's, yeah, like the commentary down the bottom just said, it's unlikely to make a difference. It was a well-worked goal. Nonetheless, Locadia was a bit strong on the ball there for Gentiletti as he made it 3-1, and as I mentioned, yeah, probably won't be a huge impact. Rugani's had a really good game, though. I think his rating, did you see that? His rating went down uh, when we conceded. A bit disappointing, because he deserved a better rating. It's still good, <laughs> of course. Maybe we could finish it off. Don't think so. That's going to be full-time at the Olympico. 3-1 to Lazio. Strong performance at home is what you want in the Champions League. I really, I want to be, that would be the improvement, I think, for Lazio to be a mainstay in the Champions League. I think, what do you guys think about that? Like, Basel did really well to beat Monaco. I thought Monaco, they could be the best team in the group. Like, if you take us out of the equation, I don't really know. Who do you think is the best team in the group? <laughs> I'm unsure at the minute. Like, I would think Basel would be the worst team. Uh, I'm not really sure. I have to analyze their squad a bit more. But either way, I'm really happy with that. And yeah, what do you guys think about that? Really try and make Lazio a mainstay in the Champions League and not what they have been in real life, been really up and down. Like they'll finish top three one season and next season they won't get that consistency back in Lazio. That's the goal. Now, guys, we're heading into the third and final game of the episode, and it is against Inter. I feel as though how this game goes, it'll leave the tone of the episode. If it's a win, I think we'll be pretty positive. We tried really hard against Juve, and then got a really good result against PSV, and played well. And I think if we can win here against Inter, it'll be fairly positive. But if we have a bad performance at home, and somehow we lose, or maybe even draw, yeah, maybe yeah, won't be as confident. So big game here. Let's go straight into it. And to get back in top three as well, really important. And again, back with the lots of subs, because they're back in this area now. And yeah, pretty strong, uh, pretty strong team. I'm even thinking we may have to bring in one more player, Marco Parolo for Onazi. Uh, just get the big guns back into the team. Philippe Anderson still really wanting to see a bit more from him. And if he doesn't perform here, there's a lot on it because then I may just uh, play. Uh, who is it again? Uh, play Ziv uh, or Zivkovic. Uh, it's it's up for grabs really. Like Zivkovic is hard to play regularly because Kendreva is so good on the right side, on right wing inside forward. But I think Bolde Kater, if Philippe Anderson doesn't step up, he could take his place as the starting uh, left winger. But Philippe Anderson, high hopes. They're both, yeah, high hopes for both. It's really hard to play both of them at the same time. But we'll get straight into it. Okay, it's an early opportunity for us. Basta with the cross, and Handanovic makes a save. I really do rate Handanovic as a goalkeeper. A really strong goalkeeper, really experienced. I told you already I like the experienced goalkeepers, but here, Maori. Maori. He's trying to run past, and he plays it in. He plays it in, and Juan Jesus clears that. Gentiletti, Rugani. Rugani, he looks so comfortable on the ball, doesn't he? Matri! What a strike that was! But he is offside. That is really disappointing. Because oh, that was oh, thunderous. That was thunderous. It's going to show you the replay now. And we'll see how close that, in fact, was to being offside. So, Regani, uh, you can see his control there, like I mentioned. Oh, that's really close. 
that is really, really close. And that it's disappointing. That was fantastic. And that was so... Oh, you can't even describe. There's inches. Inches in it. But now, another opportunity. We've got to be focused here because Inter look to have that. It's Perisic. It's Medal. Oh, no. That goalkeeping was terrible by Marchetti. How can Medal score against you? He's got crap finishing, yeah? It's like nine. Oh, that's so bad. Like, at this level... And I could tell from the goalkeeper's position. I knew that was going to be a goal when he striked. The goalkeeper's positioning was horrendous. Marchetti, what are you doing? No consistency at all shown with his yeah goalkeeping. Look, what was he? What was he doing? Oh, that was terrible, really. So I think it's safe to say this half has been really disappointing, especially if we concede here as well. That would be not acceptable. Medal, Peruzzi, it's Condogbia. Oh, just waiting for them to take that shot, but we do force them back. The opportunity's not done with yet, though, and Jovetic scores just before half time, and ooh, that's hard to take. Uh, but yeah, Inter, they've had a lot of possession. We've only had the one shot on target. Uh, we had the offside opportunity. Like I said, it would have been so different. It would have been so different if it wasn't offside, and we could have had that 1 0 lead, and just, yeah, it could have been a different complexion. And now we, it's just going to be hard for us. We're going to have to do something big to get anything from the game. So we'll have to come in with a really strong team talk. I expect to see much better. These are all play players that have played poorly have done the job this season, like Bilia, uh, Matri, but they're just not having good games for no reason specifically. We've played well, really well, for most of the games in the season. Like, even against Juve, we're poorer than that game. And we're playing at home, and that was away against the best team in the league. And Inter still have quality players. Um, I think we have we need to make an early change here. We need to make a change fairly early to get a goal if we want anything from the game. Matri, it's just not his day today, I feel. And we'll bring on Miroslav closer. I'm wondering, yeah, maybe when should I give Djordjevic a chance? But again, Matri has been consistent. So I, I didn't expect this performance from him at all. It's disappointing, to say the least. And we'll just... We'll make that change, but there's quite a few players that I'm really not impressed with. <laughs> ah, come on. And even Lulic as well at left back. He was so good in the previous game. What happened? Like, he got a couple of assists. I was probably expecting the same, and then puts in this performance. We'll bring on Stefan Radu, who's been really good this season. Maybe I should have brought him in, but the form from Lulic was saying, yeah, surely, um, maybe he'll get forward and get more assists in this game, but... It's not to be, and I feel like Inter, they're just really trying to hold on to the result now. It's really hard to create some opportunities. They're, they're dominating possession. So maybe we gotta, we got to change this up a little bit. Maybe we can go with a bit of a lower tempo, and maybe ourselves, uh, maybe try some shorter passing, try and retain possession, try and keep possession. And we'll see if that one will be a bit more expressive, though, opposed to being more disciplined, because now we need to be scoring goals. And we'll see how that goes. Okay, highlight right away. So hopefully that can be a positive change. Parolo. Oh, that's a foul. Is that going to be a red card for Miranda? It is a red card. This gives us hope. Now I'm kind of rethinking the changes. Like, obviously, maintaining possession. Like, you'd think direct will be the best way. But we'll see. Kandreva. Could it be a double whammy? Nah, that basically never happens. <laughs> Where the, yeah, the highlight is a red card, not a goal. Okay, really now. I'm almost thinking, yeah, two strikers. I talked about Djordjevic. Maybe it's your time. He'll uh, Closer, obviously, um, he'll be on. And we'll take off. Do we, may, do we take Mary off? I think so. I think so. And we'll just add that second striker, uh, Djordjevic, who's more of a target man. So that suits it perfectly, actually. Having, ooh, how would complete forward go? Can we go complete forward on attack, actually? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that mix goes into inside forwards. Uh, we'll put them on attack. We just got to be, yeah, we got to be searching for this now. Really, we have to. And the wing back still getting forward, so I'm pretty happy with those changes and overload because we st to win it we still need three goals. So we really need to go for it. Like we need to go route one now, uh, take more risks. And I think we still actually lower tempo. We can't choose higher tempo on overload. So lower tempo. Yeah, patient, man. I say, I don't know about being patient because we're going to be running out of time. We'll just go normal, I think. And defensive line, again, slightly higher. 
Ah, uh, yeah, we'll see. I think we'll I think we'll stick with this. Uh, we'll stick with this. Um, I won't do shoot on site yet because still there's like thirty minutes remaining. Still, in a way, there's plenty of time. But there's never plenty of time when you need three goals to win a game, even if you have an extra man. So hopefully, yeah, two strikers now. I'd like to think we can at least show. Like, if we don't end up scoring, that's fine. Like, I want to at least know I'm making the right moves in this situation, and I think we should be, because there's an early opportunity. But we, like, almost, I think we need a goal from this chance. If we do, actually, then I'll be confident. But if we don't, eh, might be hard. Basta, get it in. Oh. No, surely it can't be a chance for them to counter. No way. I'll be done. I'll leave the stadium. <laughs> I'm just disappointed there that it's not going to be opportunity for us. But now Adair, Nagatomo, Adair, Rugani. Oh, how good was that? Now I can drive her. Oh, come on. Okay, another highlight now. That's a good sign. There's like highlights after each other. It's good. Uh, but we give the ball away. It's not good if they'll end up scoring. <laughs> but again, maybe getting too ahead of myself. Jovetic, that was a tough one to save, honestly. Inter, if anything, they're still, in a way, dominating. Again, having another shot on target. Hmm. They're just doing real well here. We cannot provide anything. What the hell? We have an extra man, and we're not even looking like it at the minute. Demand more. Come on. Like I said, this game is so crucial for the tone of the episode because it'll end up being two losses. That's what it looks like right now. I'm sure a dominating performance in Europe, but in the league, this is yeah affecting us early. It will be two losses um, in this episode specifically. Unless something... It has to be now. But again, they look the ones like scoring at the minute. We don't. They've just contained us. They've just oh, exactly contained us. And they've created more opportunities than us, even when they've had that red card. They've just been switched on today, and we haven't. Okay, well, maybe a late chance here, but it's probably not going to mean much. It's a goal to Philippe Anderson. A really good goal, apparently. It's good for him, because I need him to step up. Like, if he didn't do that, I talked about him, he needs to step up. But, yeah, if he didn't score that goal there, like, he would have been one on the chopping block. Um, honestly. But it's probably too little, too late now. Maybe something can happen. I'm just waiting for the referee to blow. Yeah, just expecting that. That's the end of the match. A bit unfortunate. Really disappointing result because we had 30 minutes uh, to play with extra man and we did not look like it at all. We did actually end up getting a goal back, but it wasn't good enough. Um, not at all. And like I said early, that early offside was so close and it would have changed the complexion of the game. We probably could have ended up winning. You don't know how it would have panned out, but now we're in seventh and... Yeah, obviously Juve, they just keep winning. They keep winning games. It's going to be hard to yeah compete with them, but we still got to fight for third for the season. But at the minute, it's not... I know, we're just like a win away from that position because it's early in the season, but we cannot continue this poor form in the league. And it does look like Alessandro Matri is sharing my sentiments. He is outraged that the goal has been disallowed and the striker felt that the decision had affected the outcome of the match. I 100% agree with that. I think... Yeah, we would have been in like a great position. Yeah, sitting 1-0. Uh, the first team to score is, is a great opportunity for them to win. But again, not using that as an excuse. It's just very disappointing uh, to see that decision. But if you're being technical, he probably was very, very slightly offside. And maybe it was the correct decision. And it maybe affected Matri's performance for the whole game. Because then, yeah, he wasn't really in effect. But we're going to leave that for now. If you did enjoy it, drop a like on the video. And are you liking three games every single episode? Obviously, it results in long episodes. I like editing them, though. But the recording part is over an hour. So keep that in mind when I'm recording these videos. They take a long time to produce. I need a like hour spare free in my day. And then the editing, obviously, edit it down and everything like that. Um, yeah, probably three to four hours for each video. So yeah, it's definitely time consuming. But if you guys enjoy them, I'll continue to do them. As simple as that. And if you're new to my videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the very next video.